Well, welcome back my gardening friends to this August bank holiday tour of uh, plot three and what did greet me when I turned up this morning somebody's put an added little bit to uh, the entrance gate of plot three uh, robo crop has uh, puffed his chest up and uh, he wasn't with me on the previous video and he's took over the dressing room so looks like I'm uh, been pushed out let's have a little look in the fruit cage so if it, we'll see if we can find robo crop later see where he is and uh, there's a few uh, blueberries left on now the fruit cage is uh, left open so the birds can come in and uh, pick up any of the fruits that are lying on the floor, the seeds, etc. And we'll have to give this a good tidy up um, in the autumn. And obviously learning from my mistakes in not supporting them, I'm gonna have to train them. It's just ridiculous uh, not being able to walk through. It damages the fruit and uh, it doesn't look very uh, aesthetically pleasing. Now this is one of the uh, sunflowers uh, that we had um, from the uh, bird food. That's the variety two, or that's what we thought. I was hoping for a nice coloured variety, but it didn't actually happen. The uh, dwarf kale has got um, uh, a little bit of white fly, but the sun, my son doesn't mind. He says they blend up nicely, and it is a dwarf variety. Or supposed to be. But uh, that's uh, coming coming good again. It seems uh, this weather does knock things about. And the peacock white kale uh, is uh, trying to grow. But unfortunately the pigeons uh, have uh, helped themselves to it. So uh, if I do get any more of these seeds, I'm going to have to uh, net these. But with, literally we have to net everything. The cage uh, that's been here now for three years is now gone. We took it down so that uh, Shafali uh, from Midland, New Midlands Today News and Weather could come onto the plot uh, to do uh, a little bit on me. That's uh, further down the list if you want to see my live interview on um, television. And uh, the caterpillars now are attacking most of the cabbages, including the ones in the netted cage. I've managed to repair all those pallets that have got the very, very weak hinges on. And we've got screws uh, where required. It means it's been so warm today, no good doing any digging or anything else. I've done a little bit of painting. And you can see the difference. I basically paint them to make them look pleasant because of the different colored wood. Um, I do like to let the uh, wood uh, dry out and uh, those there have also had a little bit of persuasion with a hammer and as you can see now they ain't too bad they're sitting reasonably square not too worried and with this weather everything's going to seed and I did notice on the red onion that I was uh, going to seed that it's producing uh, bulbs. There's quite a few on there. So uh, I'll be uh, taking that off shortly, putting it in, uh, well, I'm saying putting it in water. Now, what do you recommend uh, I do with these, those that you know about onions and going to seed. Now I've had the uh, the little ones grow but not the actual bulbs so I'll show you those shortly but yeah any advice please much appreciated. There's the manure runoff from uh, this bin and this is where all the potato compost goes and uh, I let it uh, continue to rot down there. That bay there is full of uh, spent compost.
again more lettuce uh, that parsnip has flopped that carrot's going rotten but we'll do an update on uh, the giant veg very shortly land of the giants look out for that one and with the heat today the celery has flopped over so I may have to put loads of water in there it has been a really really uh, warm day and uh, the uh, runner beans are still giving me lots of beans for myself and friends and family and work colleagues we've been picking some of the beans off here uh, this will be covered in land of the giants but i should have kept all these beans separate i've got them growing everywhere now and uh, and that's for you Steve Digwell green fingers just to try and keep that one straight the uh, pomgo beans uh, finished now literally and all I've done now is uh, kept all these uh, for seed and uh, these are the French beans that are planted in between because the pomgos are dwarf and I built a cage for them so uh, these uh, have done really well and they're still still producing and they're an absolutely lovely bean uh, to have I'll compare it with a French bean now yes you've got a lot of bean but bar gum these are so much better and you can't help uh, but graze uh, while you're going around the allotment. Excuse me. The best beans I've ever had. Even the lower branches on the, the beans are still giving plenty of beans. Let's just hope they can get an, enough moisture out of the compost that I put in the bottom of these uh, wigwams. Now, the lettuce, bar oh, gum, that takes some eating. I hacked it off at the bottom because I just wanted to know whether uh, it actually uh, it, it come back, and uh, it does. Now this is better uh, than the uh, the bigger leaves. Excuse me but makes good material for the compost bin now that it's uh, gone over a little bit. I know you're probably not seeing that very well guys but this is uh, the uh, Harlequins from Bill and Val Two Plots of Heaven they also sent me the Pongo beans so pop across to their channel and uh, I regret now planting that in with the uh, tomatoes uh, you can see what the wind's done and the um, sunflower is taking all uh, the water but they're ripening and they taste quite good excuse me these are the transplant carrots from the carrot bed and uh, I think it won't be long before I'll do a reveal on those and I can even feel now <laughs> there's one or two extra legs on those these are my sarpos that I grew from seed three years ago from the the actual tomato little heads you know the seed pods and it won't be long before I'm actually pulling all these tops out that one looks the strongest at the moment and that one had got the actual added potato feed so this experiment here with potato feed fertilizer compared with my homemade compost will uh, we'll see how, how, what a sort of difference we get carrots are doing really well out here I haven't opened them up again since we did the uh, comparison from the from the these carrots outside to the ones inside and uh, I need to go back a bit further because I need to open up these because I have got a carrot uh, beetroot and parsnip in uh, there for the long root 
they'll be revealed two days before the show because I can see they're going to take some uh, getting out and uh, we've got numerous uh, amounts of uh, peppers tomatoes far far too crowded uh, in this uh, growing space yes it'll be better with um, the uh, the roof that much higher but uh, trying to grow cucumbers next to uh, my long uh, chilies is just uh, becoming beyond a joke but the uh, grapes now have all gone really really nice and sweet but they are going a little bit wrinkled at the bottom so I've got to do some serious uh, eating normal cucumber giant cucumber <laughs> oh god what a size yeah far too busy in here far too busy Again, we'll do a video on uh, the good and bad of uh, this year's polytunnel in a future video. So, uh, do you remember the seed head that had got all the, uh, the little green shoots coming out? Oh, there they are now. So, I haven't got to buy any leeks now. I'll let these grow on and then we'll get those into the new beds uh, over the winter. And in here are all the little garlic uh, ball blitz, um, but the small ones. So they're in there, they'll grow away and hopefully uh, give us um, a nice harvest of garlic again. And while we're talking about garlic, uh, may I come in, Sir Robocop? Mm. Oh, some more of the seeds, a uh, save seed there poppies and there's the uh, garlic that didn't split and even though I didn't think the other garlic had split it has now now it's just showing a bit of green there on some of them when I uh, open them up is that okay can I keep drying these out and uh, I'm, I'm not going to use or eat any do anything with them I'm going to replant all those uh, any help on the the green one please and uh, in the <coughs> fruit cage we grew some wheat no not those oh damn weeds damn white fly now these are the black currant seeds transplants we took from below the black currant bush um, I bought them inside because they got too wet and now they've got too dry so uh, but yeah they're coming along nicely as well I must say even though all this uh, salad bed is going to seed um, there's absolutely loads of uh, lettuce and chard that we're uh, taking off this and uh, as you can see all the leeks that we cut off are now nearly as high as uh, the lettuce so a bit of a comparison it's got to be two to three foot high let's just show you the leek that um, hadn't got any signs of leaf miner as soon as I saw that we were getting the leaf miner I sprayed it with uh, the neem oil exactly the same as the beetroots and it stopped it pretty well straight away so that's what I shall do next year. I've treated a few of these as well at the front. Uh, I'm not using the uh, lettuce from this area. Now I've been spraying. But it'll be interesting to see how these leeks do. And if you remember, all these were cut off near enough to the bottom. And this is my giant beetroot from last year. Still waiting for it to go to seed. 
don't know what the seeds are supposed to look like but signs of nothing at the moment uh, the cabbage uh, white butterfly I don't know whether he's laid the eggs uh, through the netting which is always an issue uh, they can lay the eggs through the, uh, the the mesh especially on debris netting but uh, I've uh, sprayed these with neem oil white fly oh dear they're not flying no more yeah, it's stopped the white fly as well um, just keeping an eye on the centre of that one it may be uh, blowing which isn't a good sign and uh, this is my best one and uh, the caterpillars had just started on this one so they've had the same treatment but this one as you can see there's just one or two holes the more holes they dig into it the uh, the less weight there is but uh, this is over a meter and a half wide now so I've just got to figure out how I get a green and a red cabbage to Malvern and uh, on the uh, back up red cabbage we've got the the pups growing all around and if they come on in the next uh, 30 odd days even though that doesn't look the heaviest it may well be because the pups uh, will add the weight which is allowed I'm really uh, pleased with the uh, foliage on the parsnips I've had a little uh, fertile round and uh, it looks pretty good and as you know I've been doing quite a few uh, carrot reveals and they got me again now if you don't know uh, the juice that comes out of the stems of parsnips carrots and a few other uh, rag uh, some of the other hog hogweed etc gets on your skin sun gets on it it actually causes blisters and I didn't notice until I uh, had a wash well it is Sunday of course so yes uh, just be careful of that my arms are still scarred from last year and there is a video in my playlist uh, on um, the damage caused by parsnip uh, and uh, carrot burns from the juices I'm going to uh, pick these beetroots while they're really small because we do like the uh, beetroots uh, as pickles but in actual fact some of those might be too small but as you can see the last lettuce bed is still producing and I love this red uh, red uh, lettuce it uh, it really does look uh, nice uh, in the old uh, scal salad box excuse me and there we will leave it at the uh, Jerusalem artichokes they're all in separate pots and as soon as any sign of flowers I'm going to open one up see what we've got happy gardening to you all till next time my friends ta for now don't forget if you like the content of uh, my video or videos then please consider subscribing it's free and uh, press the bell and you'll get uh, notifications of all my future updates and don't forget you don't have to watch them all till next time ta for now